is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today bringing guys a photoshop tour doctor John very cool simplistic angle gradient clean freaking every other thing I want to put in my title ever um header design here today so basically this actually uh, in style excuse me is inspired by Zert um the way he kind of uses his angle gradients I thought it was really really cool very classy has this really little like a very elegant style to it. it has to be one of my top five at least favorite styles of all time for sure and I mean that so I gave a shot and this is what I pretty much came up with. I think it's really cool, very sexy, just kind of has that, that's just like, just, it's just fucking dope. Uh, with that being said though, I still think that this style here is more or less kind of like really tied into, I guess, your color theory and how, how good you can see colors in a way and like that don't work. Um, excuse me, I guess you would say that wouldn't normally work, but it kind of like ends up working uh, together and to like really make this really cool kind of color scheme uh, other than header, that, that fucking English sometimes. Um, excuse me. <coughs> What I mean by that, though, is just basically taking really cool colors that kind of just have, like, this really kind of nice vibe to it. So, for me, this instance here, I use, like, a really cool sort of, like, a greenish tone mixed in with, like, a really nice little lighter tone blue, darker tone blue, and this really cool sort of, sort of offset blue-white. So, with that being said, though, it's not too difficult, I would say. This has a little bit of a color correction on it as well. This is the original angle gradient that we worked with. Um... If you guys have no clue what angle gradients are, it's just basically under your uh, gradient overlay, right? But under style, this is linear. This is the usual kind of gradients that you guys will be working with. But for this instance here, we're using, like I said, angle, which has this really super cool kind of vibe to it. And it has this almost like this little pinching kind of feature that you kind of like pinching up the canvas almost. And the gradient itself works in like a, a cool like clockwise sort of orientation. So when you're doing your colors and stuff like that, think about it as being in a circle. Um... So this one is just the, the, the current version I'm going to be using. This is the uh, angle ver uh, gradient that I'm going to be using for today's video to make this. This one here, though, has one, two, three angle gradients. And this only has one. So I'm, of course, going to multiply it in, in the future of this video. But this one here actually only has one angle gradient, which applies right here. So this one here just more or less has a more complex, I guess you would say, more spammed out um like color nodes i guess you would say because you can see how it sees uh, you see how it looks right here more like kind of like spam little color nodes and like a more of a uh hitch kind of pattern so i think it's really, really cool that what you can do with this because with just one angle grading itself you get this really really cool style that you can just apply your logo right here your social media is right here and then that's your basically your header so they're very quick very simple very cool so with that really long introduction before i start coughing like a freaking maniac um I'm going to go ahead and just say to us the video equals a suit down below, which will mostly be the PSD of the video here today. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right, guys. So before this actually gets going, I really quickly want to show you guys how this looks without the actual color corrections on it, just because I know I'm sure some of you guys are going to be pretty curious. But even without any of the color corrections and whatnot, and arguably they both look really, really good. I just kind of like really, really, really like how this looks for just some reason. But this right here might be the sexiest, cleanest thing you've ever seen in your life. Uh, probably because it is. Like, look how sip. Like, look how sick that actually looks. Like. Uh, I hope you guys, I, I, this is a real test for me to see if you guys are on the same page as me when it comes to like stylistic choices for, I guess, like designing and whatnot, but I think this is so damn pretty, but let's go ahead and get this thing going. Let's actually do this right here, right now. It should be very quick and very easy for you guys. So, this is the grading you're going to be using right here. So, uh, just in case you guys want to go ahead and just kind of copy it down, what's going to happen here is, um, in the description down below, you guys are going to see this uh, little gradient pack really quick, okay? So, you're going to have this gradient here with the same exact how this is aligned and the same exact colors as well. And then also, you're going to have the gradient to this one right here um, to actually just go ahead and uh, go into. And if you guys want to change the colors, be sure if you're going to change any colors, you keep where this little mark is, the hue, the hue mark, I would basically call it, and only mess around with your actual hue table. Okay, so if you want to make it purple, just make it purple just using the hue table. Don't try to move anything over here. It's going to look a little bit weird. Look how, yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you're sticking to the hue that it was originally at because it's probably going to give you the best look for it um, for the certain gradients. But that also doesn't ever want to, I don't ever deter you guys from actually just trying it yourselves. It's super fun, super cool. And you guys might find some really crazy different colors to basically work with because of how they, I guess they, uh, they combine with each other, right? So for this one here, I'm going to be using this one, this gradient here. So you're gonna, like I said, you're going to have this gradient and another one. So just to, if you guys don't know how to load them, by the way, all you have to do is go into your layer styles like I just did just now. Go to your gradient overlay. Click on the gradient table. This will bring you to the gradient editor, and you just press load. Just simple like that. I don't know what the actual gradient, um, like I know like brushes are dot abr. I forgot what gradients are. I believe it might be like dot gad or something. I have no idea. But whatever it is, that's how you load it. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's gonna happen here is, uh, I, I would kind of go through these colors really quickly. The hex code is two 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 B three B, 
And so basically, uh, usually how gradients would work is you're working with your shadows and then your highlights on the far right hand side here. The hex code is C9D4E6. Uh, and then these are two little marks in the middle here. Basically, this is where the middle is. This is the middle. So I made two more marks right here closer toward the middle um, and then put some different colors in this one uh, these ones here this one here's like a darker blue this is a little bit of a lighter blue and this one here is a little bit of a darker blue um, with the hue table but I believe it's around the same hue so this uh, uh, this hex code is 4092b4 and this one over here excuse me I moved it a little bit it doesn't really matter too much and this one here is 18 uh, five eight eight one. So there's different. There's actual different colors. These this color here and this color here is not the same. So no colors are the same, but they all look really really nice and cohesive when you actually look at it on the canvas itself. So now that you guys have that and your angles at negative fifty three one fifty three, your scales at one fifty. The scale doesn't really matter too much. I don't think in this situation here, but I've always just maxed it out as of recently and just I don't know. It doesn't really do anything. So for me at the moment, unless I use certain uh, I guess scaling issues for a um. I don't know, just a different style to it, like not, that's not angled. But for this instance here, this is fine, so I'm gonna press OK. So to get this thing going, basically, once you guys have that really nice color scheme, it's all basically about how you end up going ahead and pen tooling and following your angles through. So for this instance here, you're most likely gonna be following angles around this. So you're gonna say, hey, if I do another angle gradient, I'm gonna make sure I cut it out and just cut off this angle here. The next thing you might do, you might say, hey, I wanna cut off an angle here. So wherever you're cutting off your angles, make sure that you're keeping a sort of uh, that point though you see this little point here you definitely want to still keep this point so <coughs> um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a duplicate of this uh, gradient right here right so control J on my keyboard just to simply make a duplicate as you guys see now this is the two uh, different gradients of the same exact gradient um, as you see like right now I'm trying to move it if you guys want to move your actual gradient uh, don't move your entire layer what you end up doing is going into your gradient overlay go into your gradient and once you're actually your uh, your on your layer style table is still shown and you're selected on your gradient overlay you can actually click on your canvas and move your gradient around without actually moving your layer so this is definitely what you want to know but uh, you definitely want to know how to do this because that's how you're gonna get a lot of your different angles and if you want to multiply which is me add more gradients and stuff like that and you want to move them that's gonna basically how you're gonna be uh, be able to do it so I'm gonna change my angle here to like <coughs> uh, let's just say like 60 I think 60 is pretty good I'm gonna move this down to about here what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna lower my opacity on the duplicated gradient just to see where it would uh, be so I want to say okay that's a little bit too close to this angle here I want to move it over a little bit more so I have some room for like my logo or if you want to move it over even more I want to have some room for text this is what you would basically how do you do it and be able to see um, with an insight right so now that you have this here, I'm going to keep my gradient, uh, my opacity lowered, and I'm going to take my pen tool here, and like I said before, you always want to follow these angles if you want to make any cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and just click over here, click top right almost, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and say that's not good enough, we're going to move it a little bit further to the right, because basically I want my pen tool to follow this line here, this, uh, this straight line here. And I would say that is pretty good, pretty accurate. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to put my opacity back up, excuse me, back up to 100%. Once I have this, I'm going to go ahead and click and go around the right hand side, not the left hand side, because wh wherever you're going around and whatever, I guess, inside the pen tool marking is what's going to be deleted. And that's what you want to have be deleted because you want to have the left hand side being shown. So over here, just like so. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on the layer mask right here, which this is end up doing for you guys. This is how you basically get rid of or erase or put in. If you guys know how this works, if you guys see how my gradients, uh, this is my foreground and my background are red and pink right now. If I click on the actual layer mask, it turns to black and white because what happens here is when I make a selection, when I right click on my pen tool, make a selection, press OK. If you use a black brush, it erases. And if you use a white brush, it'll fill in. So this is like a really cool, nice, neat way to kind of make sure you have your clean erases and go backs and fixes and do overs. So if you guys want to, you can just also press Alt Backspace. That quick fills the foreground layer, which happens to be the first color in front of you, which is black usually. Press Control D to deselect. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't actually have my logo in here, and I'm just gonna copy this in here right now. I also just like have this little weird whistle come out. You guys heard that? Um, there's the logo right there. I'll just say I'll put it right there for now. Okay. And then for my example here as well, I actually do have another one right here. So for this one, you guys probably imagine what I ended up doing was I'm going to duplicate the original gradient though. Put this above this one here. I'm holding alt, dragging it above. You can also press control J, drag it above. <clears throat> as you guys know, lower the opacity down. Okay. 
double click on this one here, move this over here because I want to move it over here, right? I'll click on gradient overlay, move the gradient this way, change my angle to something different. I like how this looks. Um, a little more like this. Okay, and press OK. Now I'm gonna do for this instance here is I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna throw on my layer mask. I'm gonna make my opacity back to 100%. But this time I wanna keep the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my same exact cutout from this one right here. Um, as you guys remember, if I, this little cut right here, we cut out the right hand side. So I just press Control and I Control click on the layer mask and thumbnail. It'll select what is still there. So the white spots are actually still there. So when I press Control click and click on the thumbnail. Um, with that, whatever you do, by the way, you can press Control and you click on the thumbnail. It'll select that. So it'll make a selection for that layer. What's in that layer? So whatever is still white on my layer here, which is like the, the part we cut on the right hand side is black. Whatever's still white will still be there. So that's exactly what we want to need to cut out. So all you have to do is just go ahead and take your black, you know, brush if you want to erase like that, or press Alt Backspace to uh, actually get rid of it. So what I want, so I also want to do, excuse me, is I'm gonna take my soft brush here. Still on black, by the way, so I'm still erasing. And I'm just going to go over here and kind of erase a little bit because I don't want it to... You see how how I got rid of the little white spots here? And it kind of got... It made it look kind of weird, right? You see it right here? i just do it again, right? See how I just kind of covered over the white, which there's no more contrast there. So I'm going to take my black brush, give myself a nice little little spot here. You guys will tell that this is still there. I'm sorry for pointing it out if you didn't notice, but I'll try to fix it for now just like that cool so <coughs> excuse me now that this is basically done here what i'm going to basically do is say i'm just going to stop it right here but if you guys want to you can just definitely type in something cool like uh sohq.com right and i'll make it white um <clears throat> i'll go ahead and just go ahead and make it smaller here and kind of just say it looks pretty nice this font platea looks so damn good with this style there's no way you can you can decline that look how pretty that looks Honestly, so if you guys wanted to stop here, that is definitely a possibility. If you guys want to add more gradients, that is also still a possibility. All you have to do is take a gradient, your original gradient, make a duplicate of it, put it all the way on the top, lower the opacity down, right? Then if you want to move it, make sure you can't move it like this. You got to click on the layer style itself, click on gradient overlay, then you can freely move it. And then once you're done, you press OK, you bring it back in, you can use then your layer mask. And then I'm just for the sake of it, just going to like erase, right? You can figure out where you want to erase just like so, right? So that if you want it, you can definitely continue and keep going and keep going and keep going if you guys want to. But for now, I'm going to say this is good. And I want to quickly show you guys as well when you're done with it and you want to add a really cool, simple correct, uh, color correction to it. What you can do is click on your first layer, your top layer, all the way in your uh, layer styles, right? Or your layers, period. And you want to hold shift, click on the last layer, including the background. I'm just going to click on everything. It's pretty much okay, okay if you do that as well. So control J is how you duplicate. Control E is how you merge together. I'm going to right click, convert it to a clipping mask, excuse me, convert it to a smart object, and then go to filter, camera filter raw, <coughs> excuse me. And the way I got some really cool different colors is messing around with my temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and just move around a little bit. Oh man, you see how like, wa like the washed out kind of vibrant colors or desaturated colors look so, so, so pretty. And you mess around with your dehaze to get a little bit of a sharperness. Think of it. Think of dehaze in this instance here as like a uh, like a contrast. Clarity looks pretty nice too, but I would definitely I want to mess with it too much. I would say leave that alone. But vibrance and stuff like that. If you guys want to choose that, like you will never see these colors. Like when, when was the last time you saw colors like this? It looks so so pretty. Like no way in hell. Like press OK really quick. Also, if you guys want to see a before and after with them combined on the same exact um, canvas, excuse me, you just click on this little Y here. You'll see the, uh, the little combination of before and after on the left hand side. Before and then on the right is uh, after. So then press OK. And there you guys go. So a really cool, beautiful color to it. Um, just by using a little bit of a, a different te uh, temperature. So what I want to also show you guys really quickly is under camera filter raw it, by the way if you guys ever want to use a color correction you ever want to change it again since you made it to a smart object you can still click on the same exact one and uh, you can fix it and, and mess around with it but also i wanted to add something in effects so under this here is your green you want to take your amount if you put this up to like a pretty good amount so like 25 or so pro 20 i'll say 20 is pretty good press okay you get this really nice noise texture to it 
which just ends up looking super, super freaking dope and pretty as well. And I think you guys are just going to really enjoy this style, like I said before. Shout out to Zert. But uh, yeah, a very simple, very hopefully a little bit quicker tutorial here for you guys um, to have fun and explore with. Because I can definitely, like I said, I put this in my top five like for clean headers. Uh, it's just so, so, so pretty, and there's just so many different colors you end up finding through this process, and I believe with this style here, your color theory, your color, like, sort of, your your, your color wheel in your head is just gonna, like, just be inspired by a whole, different, uh, a whole bunch of different colors, but I'm gonna stop talking. My voice hurts so very much, and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video here today. I apologize if you guys, like, you probably, like, just, I hope, why are you sick? I don't know. Just please, just bear with the voice. Um, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like this video. It goes a secret down below. And with that being said, I'm gonna get off. I'm just gonna go. Love you guys. So so HQ out. Do not forget to keep. Uh, do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Even if you're sick like your boy. Uh, happy holidays. This should be the last video of 2018. I just want to say really quickly for the whole community itself. I've been saying a lot on Twitter recently, but I just appreciate everything we've done in this year. We've done so, so, so much and ended up with a really, really big job at the end of it. So I just want to say thank you guys so very much um, for over to me at the end of the video. I love you guys so very much and I honestly mean that. And I can't wait to meet some of you guys in the future. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Later. So let's make you out. Peace.